السلام عليكم I fear for you guys from falling into backbiting and gossip. And I fear from you guys that if I were to talk about this, you will never come back again. But my fear for you is greater than my fear from you because I love you. So I'm going to keep going with the topic, inshallah. I have talked to a brother who is in a very sophisticated educational institution one of the biggest and most famous ones. He's a vice president there. And I asked him, how come you're not running for vice president one more time? He said, enough is enough. I'm like, explain. He said, there's a lot of gossip and backbiting going on. And I cannot handle this. And this society is based on backbiting and gossip. That's it. That's what it's based on. And you know this better than me. You go and buy a chocolate bar and there's a gum, and there's a cashier, and they have to put a magazine about backbiting and gossip. Katy Perry has left Russell. Brad Pitt and Angela Julie exposed. Paris Hilton exposed sexual tape. It's all over, even the kids read this. This is nothing hidden anymore. We think that gossip and backbiting makes you rich and famous. La wallahi, you're, you're wrong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us we have freedom of speech, we do, but with limits. You can drive, but there are limits, there are speed limits. Drive anytime you want. But don't cross the lanes without signal. Don't go over the speed limit. Don't. And Allah tell you speak, but you have limits. And Allah stresses on very, very hard that you guys be one with one another. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَى Brothers and sisters are with one another. Allah called us brothers and sisters. It was not me and you. I why I call them brother, sister. Why? Where that phrase came from? Allah told us. One another. Wallahi, Islam is amazing about the love of brothers and sisters together. It's just amazing. He said the Muslims are just like structures, like buildings. One another. We not let go to one another. We never separate. If one of us, we're just like a one body. If one of us is in pain, all of us feel that pain. We don't say what's happening in Syria or that country or Libya or Yemen. I'm not Yemeni, I'm not Syrian, I'm not Somali, I'm not this and that, so there's no feelings. No. The believer feels pain for what they're going through. Allah stresses this after this and verse after verse. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الْإِخْوَى Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said, La yu'minu ahadukum. You are not a complete believer until you love for your brother and sister what you love for yourself. The Prophet hooked your belief with the other person beside you. That person beside you, your iman is dependent on him. How do you love for him what you love for yourself? Do you hate for him what you hate for yourself? This is what Islam is based upon. The Prophet told us there's no such thing as lying except in three situations. And they're not even considered to be a lie. When you try to bring two people together, there's a fight. You can go to one person telling them that such and such person said that you're an amazing person. And they feel bad for saying such and such about you. And they never said that. But the Prophet said, this is not a lie. هذا ليس كذب. Because you're bringing two people together. Look what Islam promotes. Do not expose one another. Do not expose one another. Conceal. This is Islam. Manners and worship connected, never separated. This society completely different. And you guys know that. Who took this one million dollar shot for John Travolta? He used to have six packs, now he has six layers of fat. Taking pictures and exposing people. This is a society. This was introduction, jumping in and digging deep to today's talk. I have a question for you guys. Manil Muslim, who is the Muslim? Who is the Muslim? Who is it? Go ahead. Us, Us but define it. So a non-Muslim comes to you, who is the Muslim? Go ahead. Beautiful, she said, whom Allah and the message is more beloved to them than anyone else. But the Rasul, that's a beautiful, that's feeling the sweetness of Iman. But the Muslim, the Prophet answered the question. And you guys memorize it, promise to memorize. The Prophet asked the Sahaba, Man al Muslim, who is the Muslim? Then the Prophet answered, Al Muslim, 
مَنْ سَلِمَ الْمُسْلِمُونَ مِنْ لِسَانِهِ وَيَدِهِ the Muslim, the T-H-E, Muslim, is the one whom the brothers and sisters feel safe from his or her tongue and hand. Look how severe the tongue is. Your tongue determines if you're a Muslim or not. How you speak. Are you that person when people see, they like, stop talking. Because if this person hears us talking, it will be spread all over Facebook, all over the school. Are you that person that's physically bully? That every time you come, he's like, is he behind me? And you start getting irritated. Is he behind me? Is he behind me? That person, if some people feel that, like that towards you, you're not a complete Muslim. Sallallahu alayhi wasallam. You see Islam? You see how it promotes how we should feel? Every, you see how severe the tongue is? Man salim al-Muslimuna min lisanihi wa yadih. The Prophet stresses on the tongue and watch what you say. Every single morning you wake up. A hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Every single morning you wake up. All your body parts, every single body part you have begs and humiliates itself. Begging, please, please. To who? To the tongue. All the body parts, please. What is it saying to the tongue? Ittaqillaha fina. All the body part is saying to the tongue, fear Allah in us. We are part of you. Whatever you say will be reflected in our body parts. If you are straight, we are straight. And if you're corrupted, all of our body parts will be corrupted. Look how severe the tongue is. Look how severe the tongue is in one word. One word. One single word can determine your final destination. One word, period. That's it. What's my proof? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Inna al-abd la yatakallama bil kalima. Min rudwan Allah. A slave of Allah would say a word which grasps and gets Allah's pleasure and satisfaction. Rid Allah. And, and la yuqi laha bala. And that slave doesn't even think about that word or how valuable it is to Allah. And because Allah valued that word so much and He loved it, He would raise your ranks in paradise for one single word. Example, someone coming up to you, telling you such and such person is a, and you can tell he's about to curse, you say stop. One word. This stop can lead you to the highest levels in Jannah. Period. Done. Just for this word. Jazakallah khair. Your life has been determined, you're going to Jannah. Stop. I was upstairs and I try my best. Wallahi, just telling you this as an encouragement and hoping that Allah would accept. I was walking outside and I seen like doors right there. And I want to leave and I'm saying, wait. Then our brother comes up to me. He's like, I have something to tell you. I'm like, what is it? He's like, it's very urgent. I'm like, go ahead, Bismillah. He said, there's this brother. I'm like, Bismillah. There's this brother. So I gotta, my antenna, my signal has to be very clear. He said, there's this brother. One time he was walking by the house of this sister. So it's getting already fishy. As he was walking, I saw him with my own eyes entering the house. I should have told him, stop right here. He said, then after they went, he went inside into the sister house. I was talking them from a distance. Wallahi, this happened right here. And he said, and I was looking, and I saw through the bedroom windows, through the bedroom windows, I'm like, stop, 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 stop. Stop, don't continue. He's like, what? I'm like, don't continue. He's like, why? I'm like, don't open your mouth. I sense, and you guys sense where he's going. I threw through, th I looked through the bedroom window. I said, Umar ibn al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him. When he was the Khalifa, the leader of all Muslims, he was walking by the neighborhood. He seen and he heard a guy and a girl sleeping with one another and they're not married. He went to Ali bin Abi Talib. He told him, Ya Ali, I have seen them and I have heard them doing this and that. Give them the punishment. He said, Ya Umar, if you say their names, I'm going to whip you. He is the Khalifa of the Muslims. He said, do you have three more witnesses? He said, no. He said, if it's only you, I'm going to whip you. He said, Ya Ali, I've seen them and I've heard them. He said, just pronounce it and you're going to get whipped. This is Islam. 
covering the people even if you've seen them and you've heard them doing sexual acts. What kind of religion tells you there has to be four witnesses for sexual relation punishment to be taken, taken into account? How can you have four witnesses? This is Islam. One word, watch out. I told that brother, watch out, I cannot continue, stop. He slammed the door and he left. Between me and my heart, I'm like, I don't care. As long as I keep my relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and as long as I don't accept my own brother to be back bitten about or gossiped about, you go to whatever you want to go to. May Allah guide him, may Allah protect him, may Allah do whatever he wants to do with him. But I don't want to hear this. And we will talk about is backbiting equivalent to listening to it? I'm just listening, I'm not saying it. Is it equivalent? Allah knows best. One word can ruin the oceans. What? One word, if it's transformed to a part, it can ruin the oceans. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was with his wife Aisha. May Allah be pleased with her. She was a little like, uh, she had some ill feelings towards Safiya, another wife of the Prophet. So she said, Alayka min Safiya, and she did this. So she did this. The Prophet realized is that what, he, what she meant is that short girl. But the reason she did it is not out of identification, but out of mocking. The Prophet said, to Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, our mother. He said, had your word be put in the ocean, it would contaminate it. If that word would be put in the ocean, it would contaminate. Imagine there's a fly in a bathtub. You filled your bathtub with water and you put a fly. You're like, oh, I can't take a shower in this. The Prophet said, the word of Aisha, which is probably smaller than a fly. Put it as small as a fly, as small, just transform it. Put it in the ocean, done, contaminated. Fish will die. Subhanallah, one word. Digging deeper, what is ghiba, backbiting, and what is gossip, namima? Ghiba, bismillah. Beautiful question. What's the difference between riba, I mean, between hearing it and listen, uh, hearing it and saying it? صح? I put this line all the way at the end of the talk. But I'm just telling you this, wallahi, out of just learning it, wallahi. But the one who asked the question is my mother. And I'm not going to go any forward until I answer her question with all respect. And this can be the best lesson you get out of this halaqa tonight. Mama. Habibti? No, no, no. The listener, the listener of the ghiba, الذي يسمع الغيبة, has equal punishment to the one that says it. Equal. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one time a man went to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He told him, Ya Rasulullah, Zanayt, I committed fornication, adultery, adultery. Then the Prophet moved away from him. He went from the other side. Ya Rasulullah, the night. He moved away from him, he didn't respond. Ya Rasulullah, the night, three times. Then the Prophet ignored him, hoping that he would just leave and repent by himself. He went for the fourth time. Ya Rasulullah, the night. The Prophet moved away from him. The fifth time, he said, the night. The Prophet asked him explicit questions. Did you go all the way? Yes. Are you aware of what you're saying? Yes. What is it that you need? Tahirni, Ya Rasulullah. Purify me. After verification and confirmation, he ordered that this man to be stoned to death. So he was being stoned to death, and that brother died. Two Sahaba were seeing the people throwing stones. One of them said, one of them, Unlur satarahu Allah fakashafa sitrah walana yurjam karajmil kilab. Look at him. 
Allah concealed his sin. No one knew that he slept with a girl. And now he's being stoned like a dog, like an animal. One person said that. The other, listening. Look at this. The Prophet did not say anything. The Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam As the Prophet was walking, he walked by a dead goat. Jifatun Natina. A dead animal. You know the flies and the stinky smell? Then he asked, Aina Fulan wa Fulan? Where is the two guys, such and such the names? They both came. Then the Prophet said, Kula, both of you, the listener and the speaker, eat from this dead goat. We argue, is McDonald's halal or haram? We argue as halal, haram, McDonald's, chicken burger, and stuff like that. The Prophet is saying, eat this dead animal that is stinky and disgusting. The Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, Yaghfirullahu lak. May Allah forgive you, Ya Rasulullah. Who in the world would eat a dead animal? He said, what you've done is eating your brother's meat. And what you've done is worse than eating from this animal. Allahu Akbar. Watch your tongue, watch what you say, and watch what you hear. I hope I answered your question. And forgive me for raising my voice. I send the rest to hear. Simhini alat salti shway. Jazakallah khair. So, Ghiba and Namima. Ghiba, backbiting. The Prophet asks a Sahaba. He makes him think. I don't want to ask you a question. If a person would ask you, what's backbiting? What's Ghiba? What do you answer? The Prophet gave it in four, four words. You can take ten words. Any volunteer really quick? Malghiba? Very shy? I just hope you don't know what it is because you, don't, you never do it. Go ahead. Ma, excellent. MashaAllah. Yani 9.9 .9 out of 10. MashaAllah. She said it right. Dhikruka akhaku. Mentioning your brother or sister in a way which they dislike. Very easy. Mentioning your brother and sister in a way they don't like. You won't like them. They just don't like what you just said about them. And had they hear, hear what you've said, they would be upset. You don't like it. Even if it was a little bit. So you and your friend would be talking with one another. And you go to the graduation pictures. And one brother or sister is trying you know, to look proper for the picture. So the brother wears a nice tie and a suit. It just doesn't match. Looks really funny. He always comes with his pajamas. So you're like, look at this guy. Look, look. He he's, he's not in style, man. This guy's an idiot. This, Ghiba. She has a big mouth. Ghiba. She's so ugly. Ghiba. Look how her ears look like. Ghiba. She's dumb. Ghiba! You're so tall, you look like this and that. Ghiba! Look at this guy's hat. Ghiba! Because you have an intention of making fun of him. Ghiba, Ghiba, Ghiba. Namima, gossip, what is it? Namima, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-Qalla bayn al-Nas. The transfer of words between the people. And this, you need to listen up for both of them. And Namima is the transfer of words. I'll give you an example to define to you Namima. I was in my physics class in grade 11. And I will never forget it in my life because Namima is so harmful. It's so much pain. And everyone that Allah punishes for ghiba and Namima is deserving of it. Because you hurt us and you deserve it. And Allah is the most just, and He will not punish anyone or reward anyone. He will not punish anyone unless they deserve it. Grade 11 physics class at Miss Oni Orson in Forster High School. A Muslim brother went to one person, told him, you see this guy right there? What about him? He's saying about you, one, two, three. Saying stuff about you. This is the core of Namima. You know what she said about you? She said, she said, I don't know what to tell you. She, I'll tell you, okay, but don't, don't tell anyone. 
she said about you a with around the girls that you're probably dating such and such guy and talking to him online. Namima, 100%. That person then went to the other guy, that's my class, back to the story. He told him, you see, he, he went to the guy whom he pointed to. He said, you see that guy? He's saying this, this and that about you. So then he sat at the back and he was looking at both of them, giving looks and anger, grade 11, they're not kids. And he was looking at him, upset, and this one guy started giving fingers to the other. You talk this about me, I will show you. And the other guy said, you talk this about me? They could not hold it. In the middle of class, they kept punching each other and fight and fight and fight. And this guy at the end, I've seen him laughing. He was a Muslim. The guy who was talking about was a Muslim. And the guy talked about was also a Muslim. This is the core of Namima, and you know very well it happens around. Gossip. Gossip, gossip, gossip. Just yesterday, there were two act, an actor and an actress. It was probably, uh, no, sorry, a musician, Nicki Minaj, having dinner with another guy. The one that took the photograph could not handle this. He said, oh, such and such Nicki Minaj and this person are now dating Namima. This girl, you know what happened to her? What? This guy proposed to her and it didn't work out. Tayyib, what happened? I'll tell you what happened. I think the guy found out something about her past. This is Riba. That girl going to the girl who was talked about. Do you know what she said about you? She said that that guy rejected you because he knew something about your miserable past. Namima. I think it hopefully it's clear. Enough examples. And I want to move on into the punishments. This is, this is the reality. Namima and? Ghiba in English? Ghiba in English is? Namima? Gossip. That's the big money. Gossip is big money. The punishment. Punishment is over your imagination. Some of you, I will say a hadith you've never heard before, and, some, and most of you have heard most of what I will say, inshallah. The punishment is so large. This example, when I were to call my family in the Middle East or so on, telling them that if I were to drive my car while I'm talking on the phone, there's a fine of $500. Like what? What kind of punishment is that? $500 for talking on the phone. We can live for three months for $500 for a great penalty. Let's dig deeper. And before we move on to the punishment, I ask you a question. Is riba, backbiting, namima, gossip a minor sin or a major sin? Major sin. MashaAllah, most of you know that. One of the indicators to know if a sin is major or minor, you know how? Learn this. Sheikh Abdul Bari Yahya taught us that if Allah said this sin has a punishment in this life and in the hereafter, it's a major sin. If there's dual punishment. Hereafter and in this life. And sometimes only in this life or hereafter and, and our Prophet would say it's a major sin or so. I'll divide it into punishments, uqubat, fi dunya, punishments in al-barzakh, in the grave, in the life of the grave, and punishments on the day of judgment. One of the first punishments in this life is that what the person is trying to seek after, after gossiping and backbiting is fame and love. I love to hang out with this person because they're funny. They talk about that person funny. They walk and make fun of people like that. Like, I'm making fun of fat people. I make me funny. That person, it will go opposite of what he or she is seeking. And you guys know that. They try to backbite. I'll mention six punishments really quick. Number one, it will go against you. People will not like you when you're exposed. People will not love you anymore when you, they know you have a big mouth. People don't like that. And in the same one, when it goes against you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, most of you know the, half, the first half, and many don't know the second half. If Allah hates a person or dislikes a person, He would call Angel Jibreel, Ya Jibreel, Inni abghat fulan, I dislike such and such person. Jibreel immediately hates and dislikes that person whom Allah mentioned. Then Jibreel calls all the angels, billions and billions, way more numbers than this earth. Ya malaika, inna Allah yabghat fulan, fulan. Allah dislikes such and such. And when this happens, 
dislike and hate toward that person descends to earth. And for some reason, you might know people like that. The moment you see them or hear about them, A'udhu Billah. I don't want to talk about that person. This is enough. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes. Number one, that it goes against you. Number two, punishment is that you will continue to worry. Worry and worry and worry. Did she hear me? Will she ever know what I said about her? And then you tell that person and you backbite. <laughs> look, look at her dress. She can't even, she's not in style. The colors don't match. She thinks, she, she thinks she's cute, but she's ugly. And then what happens is that you tell that person and you move away. And then you're like, will she ever tell her what I said about her? Happens, huh? Will he tell him that I told him that he can't even play soccer properly? And you keep living worry and worry. And the moment you see that person speaking with the person you were talking about, you freak out. Like, are they talking about what I said? Then you go to that person, say wallah, you didn't tell her. Say wallah, and you get stressed, stressed. Number one, it will go opposite to what you want. Number two, is that you will continue to live in worry and worry. And three, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Ya ma'ashar al muslimin O Muslims, the one who have believed in Islam with their tongue, man amana bilisanih, walam yadkhul al-imana fi qalbih, the ones who believe in Islam with their tongue and iman didn't, didn't dissolve or sink in the heart. لا تغتاب المسلمين Do not backbite your Muslim brothers and sisters. Do not backbite them. And if you were to seek their faults and shortcomings, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will seek your faults and your shortcomings. One more time. If you were to seek people's faults and shortcomings, Allah will seek your faults and your shortcomings. Until Allah will expose you even if what you've done is in the middle of the house. You're like, no one is watching me. How do people know about this? Because Allah exposed you, because you're trying to seek and stalk people and make sure, is she really doing this? Is he really doing that? Allah will expose you. Number one, what was it? What was number one? What was number one? It'll go against you. Two, worry. Three, Allah will expose you if you're seeking to expose other people. Number four, your iman will be eaten and eaten and destroyed. Al-Hasan al-Basri said, إِنَّ الْغِيبَةَ تَأْكُلُ إِيمَانَ الْعَبْدِ كَمَا يَأْكُلْ أَسْرَعْ أَسْرَعْ مِمَّا يَأْكُلْ الْدُودِ الْجِيفَ or al-mayyit. The ghiba, backbiting, eats up your iman just like how the worms eat a dead body but at a faster pace. So your khushu' is down, your iman in Allah is down, you don't know what's going on, you don't feel the Qur'an as much, watch out, maybe watch your tongue. Yeah. Number five, subhanAllah, this is just in dunya, we didn't even move on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi min shaytan rajeem. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu jatanibu kathiran min al-dhan. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu jatanibu ولا يغتب بعضكم بعضا ولا يغتب بعضكم بعضا أن يحب أحدكم أن يأكل لحم أخيه ميتا أن يحب أحدكم أن يأكل لحم أخيه ميتا فكرهتموه واتقوا الله واتقوا الله إن And you guys, the ones that came here for many weeks, they know that I, this is not my attitude. But this is very severe. And when a sister from amongst us comes up to me, about to cry, saying, brother, I went to ask a brother a question in one of my classes. And after I asked him one question, brother, I'm like, what happened? The next day at school, all the girls were saying that we're doing something together. Wallahi fear Allah. Why would you do this to the sister? Fear Allah. Wallahi fear Allah, don't say that about the girl. She's asking your brother a question. You have no business to say anything about both of them. If you did, then you ate their body. She was about to cry in front of my face. Why? Ittaqillah, whoever does that. A guy and a girl asking one another a question. I'm telling you. 
That sister that asked the brother a question, I'll be honest, that's not the best choice. You go to other girls first. You go to other sisters. None of them are there. None of them can help you. Your teacher cannot help you. Then there's only that one brother. Bismillah, tawakkalt Allah, and make it limited. Don't make it your first choice. Another brother and sister, they cannot walk anymore properly. They're just obsessed about what people will say. I'm like, why? He called me at night one time, complaining, brother. I'm like, what's going on? He said, Every, everyone at my school and her school and her, their school, whatever country they live in, they may not be in Windsor, it might be a different country. They're just talking trash, saying this and that. And I'm telling you, I'm speaking from my heart because more than half of you go through this. For the number, Wallahi, if I were to open my laptop, showing you the emails I get, you're like, now I feel why you're speaking like that. Stop, stop, stop. Punishment in the grave. This was just dunya. It was just dunya. Punishment in the grave. May Allah protect me and you. Wallahi, wallahi. No humbleness. No trying to be Mr. Fancy Guy. I'm giving this talk. You know why? For me before all of you. Wallahi. This talk specifically, I was just writing it. Majid, wake up. Majid, wake up. Watch what you're listening. Watch what you're saying. Some of the Salaf, they used to say, I will not say a single word for the past 40 years. I've never said a single word for the past 40 years, except that I have prepared an answer to Allah to why I said this word. So whenever you want to talk about a person, think, why am I saying it? And if I were to meet Allah, how would I respond to Him? Think of the words you were talking. Think of the words that you've said. And think of the times if you did backbite before. In the grave, Qatada says, he's a great scholar, he said the punishment of the grave is for three reasons. Punishment of the grave, Adab al Qabr, Athlath. Like three, one third of the reason. Like there are three thirds. The first third is because of namima, gossip. The second third is because of riba. The third third is because of not cleansing yourself or protecting yourself when you use the bathroom. That's a punishment in the grave. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Laula an tadafanu." If you didn't bury your people, I would make du'a to Allah to allow you to hear the punishment in the grave. But because you bury your families, so Allah covered the noise of the punishment. The Prophet Muhammad walked by two graves. The first grave he walked by, he told the people, Sahaba, these two graves are being punished. They're being punished, but not for something they thought was a bit major. They thought it was just a word. You know what, she's an idiot. He's a bum. Look how he shoots like a, like a homo. It happens. Look how he shoots and make fun of him. These words, that person is being punished for namima and another narration for ghiba. The second grave the Prophet walked by, he said this person is being punished because they never purified or protected themselves when they use the washroom. Subhanallah. That's the punishment. The second punishment in the life of al-barzakh after the person dies. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said when he descended all the way to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said on my way there I've seen people with copper nails afar min nuhas copper nails they're scratching themselves and their chest the Prophet said man hawla who are these people? Jibreel answers these are the people that ate their brothers alive on earth and they were insulting them and ruining their reputation and talking trash about them. Scratching their face and chest all the way until the day of judgment. Subhanallah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa one time he was telling the people his dreams and the Prophet dreams are false or true? True. Every dream he has is true. Halm al-anbiya, ru'yat al-anbiya, haqq. What happened is that he was dreaming and he got two people, one guy on the right, one guy on the left, walking with the Prophet. 
the Prophet doesn't know who are these people. As they were walking, they went by a group of people. One person in the, in the river of blood, the other person in like, a, like an oven, and groups and groups and groups. Every time the Prophet say, who are these people? The people say, in talaq, in talaq, move on, move on, don't worry about it, move on, move on. The Prophet never got an answer. He said, I walked by a group of people, they got hooks of hadid, steel, iron. They grab the right side of their mouth and they rip it all the way until the back. Then they grab the right side of their nose and they rip it all the way till the back. Then they put it in their eyes and they put it all the way until the back. Then they move to the other side. They put the hook in their mouth and they rip it all the way till the back. And they put it in the eyes and they put it all the way till the back. And they put it in their nose and all the way in the back. And by the time they're done the first half, the other half goes back to normal. Who are these, Ya Jibreel? Who are these? And they say, in talaq, in talaq, don't worry. After going throughout the dream, it's a long dream, maybe one day we'll cover it. The people on the right and the left were angels. They said, Ya Rasulullah, you see these people that were doing the hooks? You know who are they? Who? Who were they? Exactly. Exactly. And specifically, gossip. Specifically, gossip. They would say a lie. That's how the Prophet defines it. Memorize it. These people would say a lie. They would lie about a person. They would gossip. You know when they see something going on, they just assume something? And then they would say, see that person? I think they're doing one, two, three at night. They're talking to this guy or whatever. Or I think they're dating after school. Whatever that, that case is. And this case becomes so famous, doesn't it happen? We say a sentence and next day like the whole school knows what's going on. This is the person that will rip themselves apart. May Allah protect us. Say Ameen. May Allah protect me and you from being in this act. Say Ameen from your heart, Yaqi. On the day of judgment. Are we not done? La, 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 la. We're nowhere near being done. And I summarized as much as possible. I told my wife, I can speak hours and hours about this. That's a phone, right? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa when the day of judgment comes, and you just, you're like, I just said this word. I just never thought. Wallahi, brother, wallahi, I never knew all of this. Isn't that true? Who, who amongst you knew all of this? Maybe there is, but sadly, if you knew it and you still continue doing it. Brother, wallahi, I never knew this. And you come on the day of judgment, may Allah not make you amongst them. I say you, you, but not intentionally, meaning like you by name, by person. On the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring you. Had you back bitten other people and gossiped, and the Prophet asks a question, أَتَدْرُونَ مَنِ الْمُفْلِسِ Do you know who's the bankrupt? Who's the bankrupt? What does bankruptcy mean? Economically term, economic terms. The guy with no money, exactly. That's, ex that's exactly what the Sahaba said. الْمُفْلِسِ مَنْ لَا دِرْهَمَ وَلَا مَا تَعَلَهُ The one with no money is the bankrupt. The Prophet rephrases the definition. Islam defines things differently. Islam defines things differently. He said, Al-Muslim, man salim al-Muslimun min lisani wa yadih. Al-Muflis, the bankrupt, is the one that comes to Yawm al-Qiyamah with good deeds, salah, siyam, obligatory charity, and this and that, and so much goodness. And then they come while in their life they were backbiting about a person. They were gossiping about another person. And they have slandered this and hit that and bullied this and their mouth and tongue kept working and working. What happens? So these people come, you back bit me. You were gossiping about me. I, today, I will take my right from you. Give me your good deeds, your salah, your hijab, your beard, your fajr, your qiyam al layl. You think you're that good guy? Now, it's pay time. So you pay him back, it's payback time. You take the money back, you take the hasanat back, because that's a currency exchange, hasanat and sayyat. No, no money on that day. So they take from your good deeds, they put it on their scale, and you think you're done. Then another guy comes, hold on, 
when we were in grade 9 and you have reached your puberty and you have been accountable, you said such and such behind my back. Today I take my right from you in grade 9. And they might have died at 63 or 70 or 80. And you're like, I forgot about you. Where are you guys coming from? For a big mouth which you had in this life. Taking from good deeds. And then at the end, you have no more good deeds. And all what you have left are sins. Then they look around. Another guy comes. You're like, I have no more good deeds to give you. No problem. I will pass on to you my sins. So give him sins. And then that person will be thrown in the hellfire. This is the bankrupt. This is the bankrupt. Many of you perhaps did not notice the following point. Couldn't Allah bring that man with no good deeds and a lot of sins and just go to Jahannam? Why did Allah show us and why did the Prophet tell us that they will come with good deeds? They'll be taken away. So you can feel the pain which you put in the heart of people. So you can see you vanishing. So you can feel the pain and they, they can feel in the, the relaxation that you talked so much about us. You ripped us. You were a reason why I didn't get married and I got propo- pro- postponed till two or three years. Yes, a ghibah can be a reason. It's qadr Allah, but it can be a reason. Yawm al qiyamah, brothers and sisters, another punishment. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says four words. La yadkhul al jannata namam. Period. A gossiper will not enter jannah. Are you serious? Wallah, that's the authentic hadith. If you gossip around telling a brother, do you know what he said about you? He said he wants to meet you after school. He wants to fight after school. He hates you. Doing this, you will not enter Jannah. Brother, it's just a simple sentence. I still pray. You're not going to Jannah. Except for after a long time. Up to Allah to forgive you at the moment or delay your entrance. If you're a true believer, believe in la ilaha illallah, your final destination is Jannah. But you might take a long time. And one day delay on the Day of Judgment is equal to how many years in our time? One day on the Day of Judgment is equal to? One second. A thousand years. Ka'alfi sanatin mimma ta'uddun. One day in the time of Yom Al-Qiyamah is equal to a thousand years. So is it worth it? Repeat after the Imam. One more punishment on the Day of Judgment. This punishment is just, I learned it just two days ago. I never knew this punishment will happen on the Day of Judgment. I never knew that, wallahi. It's just something unimaginable. But Allah is capable. Your mind is limited. Allah is unlimited. Allah is capable of doing anything. The one who backbites on the Day of Judgment will come. The person who he has backbitten will come with the body. In front of them, dead body. And Allah will order a person to call. You eat this body just like how you ate them in this life. And you're looking. Eat them and Allah ordered you have to do it. فَيَأْكُلُهُ وَيَكْلَحُ وَيَصِيحُ It's an order. The man who you're talking about, that girl, she will be in front of you dead. Eat them just like how you ate them alive on earth. So the Prophet says, فَيَأْكُلُهُ You will start eating them. وَيَكْلَحُ What does يَكْلَحْ mean? يَكْلَحْ means your upper lip will go as far as here. And your bottom lip will go as far as the middle of your chest. You open your mouth. We make fun of snakes. We think they're ugly. We can't look at them. On the Day of Judgment, you will be like a snake. And you will eat them and you will cry out loud as you're swallowing the body. She's stupid. You deserve it. She's done. You deserve it. I have so many examples. And I'm sure, wallahi, I'm sure, you can come and give me real examples of backbiting and gossip. Brother, I beg you. Tell us how can we erase this. I have done it, brother. I have listened to a brother. What can we do? Now, really quick. You cannot doze off. Okay? Now you cannot doze off. If I was boring the whole time, be patient, learn this. If you were listening to gossip or backbiting, it's equal to saying it. Deal? 
So both have the same way of repenting. But the one that listened to it, you gotta do a couple things. If it happens to you in the future, you tell the person, stop. Don't continue. You have to do that. Or you defend your brother or sister that you're talking about. They say, she's a liar. You're like, no, she's a truthful person. Like, no, I saw her lying. I, I tell you that I didn't see anything against this girl, so you don't call her a liar. The, uh, the Prophet said, whomever defends the honor of their brother and sister, Allah will defend their honor and reputation on the day of judgment. Defend your brothers and sisters. So you tell them you stop, or you defend your brother, or you go against it. And the last resort you have is you advise them. Like, please stop talking. Wallahi, this ghiba, we heard, we heard a talk on Thursday, is dangerous, this and that, avoid it. If they continue, you have to bounce. You have to leave. Don't say, what will they think about me? You have to leave. Leave, 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 run. Don't walk, run. You don't want to eat that dead body. Right? Does that make sense? You run away, you don't walk. You're like, should I stay? No, go, go. He won't be my friend. Let him go to whatever he wants to go to. Don't lose Allah. Don't lose Jannah. Don't lose the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam for a friend. Because no, if they backbite about another person and they tell you about it, you smart boys and sisters know that they will backbite about you. Had they done it once, they would do it twice. If you did backbite, and the listener as well, now there are more ways of, to repent. Many of the ulama said, you go to the person, you tell them, you know what? I backbit you, and I apologize. Please forgive me. Many of the scholars said, you go do that. Now that's an excellent way, if that person accepts your apology. Just a few days ago, I went to a guy whom I heard backbiting about, and I was so upset. Because the guy who was backbiting is one of the most religious people in the community. I'm like, he just did, didn't do that. So I went looking and searching for the brother. I'm like, Salaamu Alaikum. Brother, I, I, I'm sorry to tell you, just we, I heard some, ba like some ghiba going on. He said, Brother Majid, don't worry about it, I forgive you. Don't tell me what is it, just don't worry, I forgive you. Do that if you think the person will accept it. You guys realize what I'm saying? If the person will take it, go do it. But I want you guys, and I hope you guys follow the other opinion is that you do not talk to the guy, you do not tell them, you backbid them. You go and you seek Allah's forgiveness. And the Prophet ﷺ, one man asked him, Man naja? What's the rescue? What's the exit? What's the emergency exit? He said, Amsik lisanak, hold your tongue. And stay at home. Wabki ala khati'atik and cry over what you've done. Cry. So you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah forgive me. And you make dua for that person whom you've backbidden. And in the same gathering, you were talking about a person, the same gathering, let's say we were backbidding five guys, the same one you go there and you tell them good stuff about that person. You change it. You say, you said he was a liar, now we say he's a good person. And you ask Allah to forgive you, you ask Allah to forgive you from the bottom of your heart. As you can see, this is severe. Watch what you're saying. Think twice, wallahi will not lose. Think twice. I just learned a phrase at work. The carpenter and the jar, they tell what? Measure twice, is martin, or os marra. Measure twice, cut once. Take your time, measure, think. Is that word okay to say? Is that right? Think about it, think. Okay, go. The Prophet Muhammad said, Man kan yu'minu billahi wal yawm al-akhir. If you guys believe in Allah, and on the Day of Judgment, okay? Say something good or remain silent. May Allah reward you for coming. May Allah make you steadfast. May Allah make you powerful to resist these things.